Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast. I'm your host Jake, here again with Josh. Um, today we're going uh, on a trip to the Himalayas, India, exactly. This one is a bit of a unicorn also, so let me just rinse the teaware here and whoop, rinse the teaware and show you what we're working with. This is something you're not going to find that I know of anywhere else. This is um, a heritage uh, varietal old bush Darjeeling. So I think you, I think you, I've made you drink this one before, right, Josh? Oh yeah, I think I've been sampling this one for okay. a while. I really like this one. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I was very excited when this came in, and I'm still very hype on it. I've drinking a lot of it. Wow. Um, yeah, right. It has some like, what is that? Sweet it, muscatel. Very grape. Very, very muscatel. Uh huh. Muscatel grape. You know, we we've had Darjeeling's on this show before. Um, some high elevation, some low elevation. Um, this is a higher elevation one, so it's harvested slightly later in the season. Harvested on April 5th of this year. Um, in comparison, the lower elevation ones are harvested in early to mid-February, usually depending on the exact weather that year. I'm not going to rinse this one. There's an argument, probably, for rinsing it, but I think the first steep is pretty good. Why don't we smell these leaves? Yeah. Sweet muscatel grape. Oh, wow. Um, some, like, different fruits, florals. Very fruity, very little, nice. Just a, just a little bit of, like, grass or, like, garden veggies or something. That is nice. Nice. I really like how the, leaves, yellow. How the leaves look when they unfurl. They're really nice. Yeah, I, not, not a lot of places will do whole leaf Darjeeling's either. Most Darjeeling's you buy are cut up. Um, we work with the farmers um, to request uh, they do a slightly custom processing for us. I'm not sure how many other places will do that. Yeah, I mean, it's a whole leaf. Cause, yeah, cause, cause we, cause we, cause we like we like to gaiwan our teas. We like to gaiwan our teas here at the Trident. <laughs> Y'all like gaiwans? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it didn't take us long to get tea drunk. <laughs> One sip in. All right, everybody, get your gaiwans. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. Yeah. So this this is like very smooth, right? Like it's really smooth. Mm. Very 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 filling in the mouth. Um, there's there's an oiliness to it. I think so with this it's a darjeeling for mm-hmm. anyone who's used to drinking kind of darjeeling or like black teas but this definitely isn't prepared like a black tea at all so so how would you classify this okay so okay i always struggle so much to cl- to like tell people and describe what darjeelings are because you know we use basically like the chinese classification system for teas which is you know Teas are classified basically by level of oxidation um, or fermentation, as the case may be. The, technically, this is, I think, an oolong on that scale, um, but it's hard to market Darjeeling's as oolongs because, like you were saying, Josh, most are black teas. And they come from different regions of the world. Mm-hmm. So in a way, we're definitely drinking the Himalayas right now, or the Himalayan mountains, mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. a way. We are, absolutely. Um, well, I, I, wanna, I, I wanna get into the terroir here in a second, but, but, but just, to, just to a clarifying point. So Darjeeling is harvested in flushes. Um, there's a first, second, and third flush, so spring, summer, and autumn, respectively. The summer and autumn, the second and third flush teas tend to be the black teas that are exported from Darjeeling and that you'll find mostly on the Western market. So that's by and large what most people are exposed to. This of course is a first flush Darjeeling being harvested in the spring. They don't process these quite as hard as the uh, second and third flush ones. Uh, Again, it's about it's kind of about moisture content in the leaves. The spring leaves have less moisture in them, um, so they brew a little stronger. There's not as there's not as much need to process them as much. The second and third flush teas do better as black teas generally because they're not quite as naturally strong. Um, but the first flush ones have a lot more flavor, a lot more energy, just naturally by virtue of being the first flush of those bushes having less water content in the leaf than later in the season. Does that all make sense? 
Yeah, it does. And, you know, if you're just shopping at a store and you see Darjeeling or like Earl Grey, mm-hmm. some of these teas that are out there, you might never know that this exists. When I sure. first started drinking this tea, it was like a discovery. Like I didn't realize that teas grown in the Darjeeling region of India and the Himalayas and the Himalayas could actually be prepared this way. Mm-hmm. Like I, it really was a unicorn in a way because I almost couldn't match the way this tea looked with what I had experienced through my 30 or 40 years living where Darjeeling was always something more like an Earl Grey or, or, or just a black tea, you know, that was drinking with cream more like yeah, the that's, English style. That's a function of living in the West um, mm-hmm. and, and just Darjeeling's being, or, like, Darjeeling's being produced towards whatever market they're facing. Um, so the history of tea and Darjeeling is, is pretty complicated. Um, it was brought over by the British in 1841. They were, at the time, trying to not buy tea from China um, because China was, you know, tariffing it heavily. Um, so Britain wanted its own source of tea, of tea um, and they didn't want to have to rely on China. So they started, you know, of course, they had, they were, they had colonized India at the time. Um, India being immediately south of China. Um, so, of course, a natural place to try to grow tea. And there were two varietals that they tried. You know, the two main varietals of tea are Camellia sinensis sinensis and Camellia sinensis assamica. This is a really good steep, by the way. Like, yeah, it's very complex. There's... I think, well, I think, I think, I, I don't know if, tell me if I'm crazy here, but I feel like I taste like a note of like resin. I like, definitely like. I definitely taste something that tastes like more of a traditional black Darjeeling tea, mm-hmm. but then it's kind of wrapped up in this oolong or like more flory, or not flowery, or more flowery floral uh-huh. notes. Uh, but it's strong. Like mm-hmm. you can feel it, and it's complex because it's like that black tea or that traditional Darjeeling flavor only comes in on the aftertaste. Mm-hmm. And then everything else up to the aftertaste is just pure, I don't know, you know, what is this tea called officially on the store? Because this is, the, um, we're, we're selling this as a Himalayan Moonlight. It's, it's, it's a bit of a arbitrary name, but that's, that's, where, that's what we're calling it. But what I was saying, yeah, um, the, the British tried to grow um, both sinensis and asomica tea, and the sinensis did better because it had been cultivated by the Chinese for um, cooler weather and higher elevations. So this tea we're drinking is a old bush sinensis varietal, and we don't actually know the exact varietal because it's a heritage bush. It's just something that was kind of sitting around on the farm, on the on the estate for over a hundred years and they just started like plucking it and working with it it kind of again recently so we've had poor teas before right um we've had we've had the, and, we, and we called those like you know we, we use the term gushu ancient tree and the distinct thing about you know gushu tea is that it has a more developed root system the more the older the plant is the more the roots kind of co-mingle with the environment around it like the more minerals, the more nutrients it's able to draw from the soil. And I do honestly find that this has a quality in common with Gushu tea. And in my opinion, it's like, it's in the body. Like it's, it's, there's, there's like a thickness to it. There's a, there's an oiliness. There's like a certain energy and like feeling. It's, it's definitely thicker than the dragon well that we drank mm-hmm. and some of the other teas that we've drank, but it, you can see the the uh, thickness, and the color is just this this bright, bright yellow orange mm-hmm. almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is this is pretty strong. You could probably brew this a little lighter than we're brewing it now. Um, I just I just used full boiling water, a pretty stuffed gaiwan, and you know like shortish steeps, but you know I'm still steeping it. So there's 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 a little there's a there's a little maybe a little too much harshness to how I'm brewing it right now. You could. You could use less leaf, you could cool down the water to your taste, but I, I really like getting like the full oomph of this one. Um, cause I, cause I feel like it, it gets there, but like it, it doesn't really like go over the edge. Yeah. And it could be the water is just a little too hot, mm-hmm. but I mean, it's still nice. 
I feel like some of the grape notes aren't aren't quite there. Mm-hmm. Usually, I drink this around with like water around one ninety five. That's probably like, that, that, that's probably more correct. Like, like right in there, and I mean this water will is probably just a little above that, mm-hmm. but it only gets to about two hundred in Colorado. Yeah, yeah, it, it's really hard to push boiling water in the mountains. I'm just gonna yeah, go yeah, flash deep on that one. Flash deep it. But I mean, again, you used eight grams in this guy uh-huh. and like I would probably use half. Yeah. Just because that's just my my tea palate. Sure. Um, I I will you know use more if I know I'm gonna steep it the whole day. Because mm-hmm. I feel like you could steep this the whole day with like eight. Oh, uh, this one this one will go a long time. That that, that that's the other thing about be, it being like a quote gushu Darjeeling. Um, like it it has it has a lot of staying power. Yeah, I definitely noticed that with this one. It it stays longer, and you can drink it just longer. Versus a green tea, like, that'll kick out. Like, how many mm. have we steeped so far? About four or five? I think four, yeah, I think it's four or five. Yeah, yeah um, I mean... I think, I think I mean, four, but I'm not sure. I mean, we're deep into this thing, and, like, normally... <laughs> it's it's getting stronger. Yeah, it's still getting stronger, and the color's getting darker and richer. Mm-hmm. For and what, you flash steeped that last one, so... From when watching the video, um, you can see that the leaves still aren't quite open. So yeah, I don't know. So, so something striking me, uh, it's like the sweetness, the, the, there's, there's a lot of sweetness, but it's an interesting kind of sweetness. And, and, that, and that's kind of where I was going with like the resin. I feel like it kind of reminds me of like incenses in a way, like, oh, yeah. like something like, like, like a copal yeah. or something like that. Yeah. I, I, I. I can see what you're saying now. Mm-hmm. It totally has that, like, I don't know how you would describe the copal. It's like a, mm-hmm. but it does. I see what you're saying now. It's, it's thick. Sappy. It's, sappy. It's, it's sappy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's like what, like lemon rind, I think there's a, there's a pretty prominent lemon rind note. Yeah. I'm always surprised what comes out of this tea. Cause there's a lot of flavor that comes out of this tea. Mm-hmm. It's pretty complex. Yeah. It's strong. This is this is really good. This is really good tea. Like to be perfectly honest, do you think that the Trident tea is the only one that's getting this kind of first flush Darjeeling? Oh, just, just um, because you have worked with the farmers in the estate for such a long time, you can actually ask them to experiment with their processing techniques. Yeah, we've been we've been working with this estate for a number of years now. Um, we're in pretty close contact with them. We. We sample their lots uh, every year, like several times a year usually, um, and and they, they they looked for our feedback even on the ones we're not buying. Um, it's 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 pretty awesome to be like working with them for this long and have have that kind of relationship developed. Yeah, I don't know if anyone else bought this tea. If they did, probably not in the U.S. that I know of. Yeah, this one seems like a very rare, rare tea. And I feel like if you like green teas, you will like this one a little as well. If you like oolongs, you'll probably like this one too. You know, honestly, Josh, um, I think this is for poor drinkers. Really? That's why I recommend this mostly too, is for people who are fans of Gushu Cha, like ancient tree poor, because I think they'll find a lot of qualities that they appreciate in that kind of tea are found in this particular lot as well. Um, and that's, of course, the the bushes um, being like older, more developed, um, and just the fantastic growing environment that these are high elevation, clean air, cold winters. I feel like the saying that I want to come up with this one is heritage moonlight, taste the Himalayas. Yeah. <laughs> the Himalayas. Taste the Himalayas. <laughs> taste the Himalayas. I like that we really only drink really good teas on this podcast. <laughs> Come on, I wouldn't do you dirty like that. Oh yeah, no, I mean, what's the point, right? What's the point? On, only talk about what's what's good and yeah. meaningful. So, anyone um, watching the video wants to leave a comment as to what steep we're on right now. Six or seven would be my guess. I, I don't, I don't feel like this is, that this has gotten weaker. No, it's it's kind of holding its mm-hmm. holding its own right now. Mm-hmm. So this one's the one you can steep all day. Pack your gauntlet in the morning, have a few steeps, bring it to the office. Have a few steeps. Have a few steeps. <laughs> Take it home, don't let your wife and kids find it. Have a few steeps. Have a few steeps. <laughs> <laughs> You're always steeping that damn, <laughs> that damn Darjeeling. 
Well, it's like I'm drinking Moonlight, babe. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I like the name. With the, the the Himalayan Moonlight? Yeah, or the Heritage Moonlight. Yeah, or, yeah. I think there's a lot of room for brewing experimentation with mm-hmm. this tea. Mm-hmm. Like whether you're going to start with the whole eight grams or even go with four grams. Mm-hmm. I mean, and then even just the steeping times. I mean, I don't know. Um, you could brew it lighter for sure. Yeah. So how would you recommend this tea to anyone who is just a normal tea drinker? I guess you kind of already alluded to the fact that it's probably more for pu'er drinkers. Well, not necessarily, but I, but I think pu'er drinkers should try this out because I, I think there's a, lot, there's a lot of overlap and there's a lot to like, and it's, it's something a little different for people who spend all their time tasting in Yunnan. You know, if you, if you already know you like Darjeeling's, especially first flush Darjeeling's, this is just kind of a step up. Um, it is quite strong, I will say, not not in like an, any kind of offensive way, but just that <laughs> more just to like respect the leaf, know that it has a lot of power and you're going to get a lot from it. Um, so if you respect your tea leaves, get this one. What estate is this from? Gopaldara. Gopaldara. One, one, of, one of the higher ones. It's growing at 6,300 feet. How does that compare to, uh, to some of the high mountain oolongs? In terms of Taiwanese oolongs, only the highest ones. About uh, the the the, high, the highest ones like Lishan, Longfeng Sha are about that height. The good ones, in other words. So again, that's another thing this tea has going for it. You know, so, something that I feel like I harp on a lot is is in like tea growing is stress being kind of good for tea leaves in the long run. You know, it's, 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 it's a little bit, not, not to get like preachy here. It's, it's a little, I, I feel like it's a little bit of a metaphor. It's, or something that works for like human life as well. Like the, the harder conditions that the tea has to go through, the more it, it's going to like, com- to compress its nutrients, like to compress the good stuff. It's going to really draw up everything it can um, and put like it's all into it. If, if it's, if, if its circumstances are challenging, then it's going to end up sweeter and richer and more powerful. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, and and in that way, it is kind of like wine or champagne, like whatever those mm-hmm. grapes or whatever those vines go through to produce the fruit. Mm-hmm. In this case, whatever the tea plant goes through, mm-hmm. it's just pulling everything out of the environment mm-hmm. to give that very unique terroir. Mm-hmm. Heritage Moonlight. Heritage Moonlight. Visit the Himalayas. This is good. Yeah. This it, <laughs> it definitely makes us more talkative, this one. Thank you. This is good. Like the green tea was calming. This one is like... Here's, 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 here's a slogan for you. <laughs> tea is good. <laughs> Visit the Himalayas. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I, I think it's getting better. Yeah, it's not <laughs> gone yet. Like, Not not gone. I feel like it's getting better. Yeah, I would agree there. I thought it it had plateaued, but it's like it just kind of opened up to a new level. Mm-hmm. Just like, again, just like life, hopefully. What did it do? Like, it seemed like it did, did, did it get more muscatel or grapey? I, or? Uh, best guess, it's just like fully open now. And it's just, it's all coming out. Yeah. Like, we're, we're, we're through like the opening stages and it's just, it's just rocking and rolling right now. It is. There's, there's just like that much to it. And I mean, we're at what? Close to eight or nine steeps? I have no idea. Me neither, actually. If you're listening or watching, leave a note in the comments. The to listeners see. probably don't know, Josh. Yeah, you guys don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you listeners have to watch the video version. Okay, well, I guess, again, we're going to leave you guys. This is another one that will keep going. Unfortunately, we're busy people with lots of tea to drink. So until next time, guys, again, I'm your host, Jake, here with Josh. Hello. And I'll see you guys next time.